welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna jump right into today's video. So since we are moving into Christmas, my favorite time of the year, I just, I love it all. I love everything about Christmas. <laughs> since we are moving into that time of the year, I have started to receive questions from people like, okay, so you call yourself a minimalist, so what does Christmas look like in your home? First of all, let me say, Again, I love Christmas, but let me preface this video by saying Christmas or minimalism does not mean not having stuff or not celebrating holidays. It just means doing so in a way that is not excessive. Doing so in a way that you are focused on the things that bring you joy, the things that you find value in. Minimalists can celebrate Christmas. And in today's video, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about how that comes into play in my home and then share with you guys five quick tips on how minimalism can apply to anybody and to gift giving and receiving. So in terms of gifting for my family, I do not skimp out, like I don't do the whole one thing they wear, one thing they read, one thing they need, one thing they want thing. I, I don't have any problem with that. In fact, I kind of at times wish that I would have applied that into my life. But I was brought up in a home where, you know, my mother never did clothing on Christmas because she thought that Christmas was a special time. You know, as a parent, we are supposed to supply our children with clothing. It is a necessity in our society. So I just kind of have that mindset myself. Um, but my number one tip, and this is something that I have done since the day my children were born, since the year my children were born, it's that gifts should always have a purpose. Always. I have always been very focused on what will benefit my kids at this age or what is something that the whole year they have asked for and they've waited patiently for, something that they really want and I know they will find value in. So for example, growing up when they were really young, when they were just like little low tykes, I would buy them things like um, water tables to play outside because I knew that we spent a lot of time outside and I wanted them to have that sensory activity with the sand and the water and wanted them to be outside discovering and exploring. As they got a little bit older, I bought a really nice quality, like a high quality kitchen because I knew it was something that wouldn't get pushed to a corner, it would be used all the time. I bought all the food that accompanied that present and it was a well thought out thing because it wasn't just something that I randomly put together. So I keep in mind, like I said, where my kids are at developmentally, things like that. My children, they do not get gifts like throughout the year. So they know that if there's something they really, really want, if they still want it by Christmas or their birthday, they can ask for that and there is a good chance that they will get it just because they've waited so long and that desire is still there. So for my son, he is just the type of child that likes to be challenged. He likes to kind of have, you know, things that his hands are on and he's building and he's taking things apart and he's finding out how things work and his brain is working. So for Christmas this year, for example, I'm going to get him the magnet tiles, which are like little glass tiles that you can build all sorts of things with. I'm going to get him like some dinosaur kits because he is really into dinosaurs. He can tell you any fact about any dinosaurs. It's amazing. So I am going to focus on gifts that focus on his challenge mentality. Whereas my daughter, she is more like active and creative. So she's not really the type that like wants to sit down forever and take things apart and figure them out. She's more, you know, involved in every sport and she loves to run and she loves to climb and um, she's just creative so she likes to draw. So I get her things that she can do outside which also benefit my son so for example if you follow me on facebook you would see that we just put up ropes that they can be out and they can climb on that way at her age she's getting an exercise she's being active she's spending time outside instead of sitting inside playing video games or watching tv and creative with her is anything that she can kind of color and draw and she's really into an american girl doll which she has already because she likes to create scenarios. She likes to create stories about this doll and who they're friends with and what they're wearing. And so I just really focus in on that. And so I look at each child, look at kind of what they are, you know, what they're skilled at, what their strengths are, and I go from there. For my husband, 
I usually buy him things that I know he'll find joy in. So for him, a lot of it is like display, stuff that's displayed. So he spent a lot of time in the military. He did not want to retire. He had planned to be in, mili in the military for life. So I know that he really treasures his medals and his um, uniforms and the plaques that he got from his unit. So I always make it a point to buy some kind of display for that. Like this year, I will buy him a big frame for his dress blues where he can display his dress blues and his medals and that way I know that it'll stay in one corner in the bedroom but he'll see it every day and feel happy about it or I might buy him something that I know will not only be useful for him but will keep me from nagging at him which sounds so silly but these are things that I think of as a minimalist. I want him to have something that he can use, but it also helps keep our home in order. So for example, this year I'm gonna buy him a little wooden plaque that it's set up in a way where it has like a knob to hang keys, it has a place for a cell phone to be charged, it has a place for a wallet, um, place for a watch, things like that, so it can kind of be his command station by his bed. So it will be useful, it will keep all his important stuff in one spot, it will keep me from having to pick up stuff from all over the house, and it is a practical, consumable gift. Now, aside from gift giving, my kids, I have put such a great emphasis on the fact that the Christmas season is for family. They know that it's not all about gifts. Yes, they are young and they enjoy it and it's special and my parents always made it special for me so I carry that on to them. But deep down, they know and they tell people and they, they, they just understand it at a deep level that it is not about the gifts, it is about the experiences and the traditions. So we do carry on with a ton of traditions and my children love it. It's things that we have memories we're giving back so for example every single year I do a Christmas box before Christmas so on Christmas Eve and that box has a new pair of pajamas a movie a book something like popcorn hot cocoa so basically things that encourage us being in the night before sitting on the couch spending time together laying in bed reading books we also go to events so we go to all the local like Christmas festivities in our town we go to all the church functions just as a way for them to get out playing games playing in the snow, seeing Santa, all those fun things that children typically love. We also bake cookies every year. We put them in nice little like Christmassy containers and we deliver them to the police station. We also do Angel Tree where we either donate money or we buy gifts for children. They are also encouraged to clean out their room before any new gifts come in so that we can give those gifts to other children. Anything that we can do that we do as a family and that takes the focus off of gift giving and on the reason for the season, that is basically minimalism at its core. So creating traditions, making it fun, making it exciting, and making it about giving back as opposed to receiving. All right, so now that we have discussed kind of how minimalism applies to my family, I figured I would share five quick tips with how it can just apply to Christmas in general for anybody. So let's jump right into that. The first tip is one that my family has always incorporated as I was growing up, and that is to only do gifts for children. So if you just keep gift giving to the children, you just tell all the adults in the family like, hey, this year we want to put the focus on the children. So save any money that you were gonna spend on me or anybody else in the family and put it towards the children. That way, you're not buying in excess and you're not buying things that people might not want. Tip number two, pay attention to what people actually want, which sounds so basic, but I think a lot of people just walk into the store, see what's on sale, or they see a cute little like candle or just a makeup kit and they just buy it assuming that because they love it and because it's cute that this person will love it as well. Just really pay attention to what people actually like. Pay attention to the things they wear. Pay attention to the stores that they frequent. Pay attention to the scents that they um, use in their home and then go from there, making sure that you are spending your money on gifts that they will use. Which leads us right into tip number three, which is to buy consumable gifts. So anything you know will get used 
buy that. If you know that a person does love makeup, buy them a makeup palette because you know that they will get use out of it. If you know somebody that is constantly cleaning and trying to find new tools that will make their job easier, buy them that because you know that they will use it to do something that they do on the daily. Tip number four, experience over material. If you have a young child in your family, perhaps you can buy them a year pass to Disney World or a year pass to Legoland or a year pass to the zoo. Something that you know that they will enjoy, that the parents will get use out of, that the kids will get use out of, and you're not spending money on things that will sit in somebody's home. Or if you are asking for gifts, Say for example, you want to go on a big trip to Paris. Tell everybody that year that you're planning a trip to Paris, that you're trying to downsize and get rid of things and sell things so that you can save up money to go on this trip. That way people are more likely to realize like, oh, you know what would be a great gift if I gave her money towards her trip. And the fifth and final tip is gift cards are always a good idea. I know people don't like them because they say it's impersonal, but gift cards are ideal for anybody. You know that it's gonna get used. You know that it's not just gonna sit around collecting dust. It is gonna be something that someone is gonna use towards exactly what they want. So you don't have to play a guessing game. You are giving them something that goes directly towards the thing that they really desire and that they will get used out of and find value in and be joyful because of. So that's it, that is my video on minimalism and Christmas. Let me know anything that you guys do special for Christmas down below. Let me know if you like this minimalism series and if you would like to see more minimalism videos by giving this video a thumbs up, sharing with your friends, liking the content, anything that lets me know that you enjoy it and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.